It's no secret that Ryzen can provide quite a lot more multi-core performance for a fair bit less than what Intel can offer. So doing an AMD Hackintosh or a Ryzentosh can really be beneficial to those who need the extra multi-core performance but use macOS exclusive apps or just plain like macOS. Today I'll be showing you how to set up an all AMD Hackintosh and this guide is for anyone with a Ryzen CPU up to the 3950X so no third generation Threadripper chips and as well as no APUs. Any other Ryzen 3, 5, or 7 chip will work with this guide. Hackintoshers also generally work best with AMD GPUs, so this guide is for AMD GPUs only. If you need help choosing parts, I got a choosing parts for your Hackintosh video in the description below. If you'd like to skip to any part of the video, timestamps will also be in the description. So this guide is for anyone on Windows, and all the prep before we actually install macOS will be on Windows. If you're liking the content, be sure to subscribe, and if you need any help, leave a comment down below or follow me on Twitter at RealBrandonYen and shoot me a DM. Okay, now let's go over what you need. You'll need the following. A computer with Windows 10 installed. I have my system with a Ryzen 5 1600 and an RX 570. Minimum 4 gigabyte USB drive. I have this 32 gigabyte one from Patriot, and lastly, an internet connection. When I mention any downloads, they will all be in the description below. We'll start by downloading all of our files. For this guide, we'll be using the OpenCore Vanilla Hackintosh guide, and I'll leave a link down in the description in case you get a little confused. The files you'll need to download are OpenCore Package, Proper Tree, Give Mac OS, and 7-Zip. Make sure to install 7-Zip. Next, we'll begin downloading Mac OS and creating the installer. Open the Give Mac OS folder and open givemacOS.bat as admin. Press R and hit enter to enter recovery only mode when prompted. Then choose your desired macOS version. In my case, I want the full install of Catalina, so I'll choose option one. This will download a file to the Gib macOS folder to help us install macOS. Now open makeinstall.bat as admin and choose your USB stick, as well as O for open core. Once it's done formatting, copy the root path of the file we downloaded earlier by going to Gib macos master macOS downloads, public released, and then some macOS version. The file should be called recovery hd meta damage dot package. Hold shift and right click and then select copy as path. Paste that into the terminal. It'll take some time to install, but once it's done, you can find your USB drive loaded with open core and a drive called boot. Now open the USB drive and go to the EFI slash OC slash drivers folder and delete everything except open runtime.efi and then go to EFI slash OC slash tools and delete everything but open shell.efi. Download hfsplus.efi and then put that into the EFI slash OC slash drivers folder. Next, we'll download our KEX. KEX stands for kernel extension, and these are basically things that can essentially be run as either drivers or things to emulate native Apple devices. Download the following KEX. Virtual SMC, just the virtual SMC KEX folder. Lulu, whatever green, Apple ALC, Apple MCE, reporter disable, NVMe fix if you have a non-Apple NVMe drive. If you have a SATA drive, do not download this. And finally, internet connectivity texts. If you're choosing to use Ethernet, find the maker of your Ethernet port, which can usually be found on the manufacturer of the motherboard's website. I'll leave a guide down below to install Ethernet. If you have Wi Fi, I'll also leave a link down below that you can find the right Wi Fi drivers. Once you've downloaded all of the KEX, extract them and take out the .kex folders and move them into the EFI slash OC slash KEX folder in the USB drive, ensuring you have all the KEX that you need. Now you'll need to patch an SSDT in order for your USB ports to work. To do this, go to the SSDT section in the description and copy the text from the first link and paste it into Notepad, ensuring you save the file as ssdt.dsl and save it as all files, not .txt. You'll also want to download IASL so that we can compile the .dsl file into a usable .aml file for our bootloader. Extract the IASL.exe if needed, then hit shift and right click on the IASL.exe file and select copy as path. Open up command prompt and paste it in, then press space and find your ssdt.dsl file. Hit shift and right click again and press copy as path and paste that into your command prompt and then press enter. It will then compile the .dsl file into an AML file. Rename the file to ssdt-ac-usbx.aml and move it into the EFI slash OC slash ACPI folder on your USB drive. Now we'll begin work configuring the bootloader through the config.plist file. To do this, we're going to need to download a few things. We will need gen smbios, the sample plist file in the zipped folder called opencore package that we downloaded at the beginning in the docs folder, and the amd kernel patch, which you will have to copy and paste into notepad and save it as patches.plist and all files, not .txt. Move the sample.plist file into the EFI slash OC folder on your USB drive and rename it to config.plist. Now open proper tree that we downloaded at the start and open up the config.plist file by going to file and then open and selecting the config.plist file. Then press Control shift r and point it to the EFI slash OC folder on your USB drive. 
This will add all your texts and other files to the config file so you don't have to do it manually. Now you'll edit the config.plist file which is long and is also subject to change so this guide may not be the most up to date in terms of the config file. So I'll leave a link down in the description below that will help you with the config.plist file configuration. One thing you do want to delete is all of the warning messages at the very top. You can do this by clicking on it and then pressing the minus key. Once you're done with the guide and configuring BIOS settings, come back to watching this video. Now we'll begin installing macOS onto our system. Shut down your system and then start it back up with the USB drive still plugged in and immediately hold delete after you press the power button. This will take you to your BIOS. Find the boot menu in your BIOS, which should be the last menu, and then boot up your USB drive. This will load OpenCore's boot menu for the first time. In the boot menu, use the up and down arrow keys to choose macOS base system external and then press enter. If you don't press any keys, the system will automatically boot off the last use option in a few seconds and pressing the arrow keys will stop that. Once you boot into macOS installation, choose your language and then open disk utility. At the top menu, select view and then choose show all devices. Click on your SSD, then click erase and rename it to whatever you want and format it as APFS and GUID partition table. Once it's done, exit Disk Utility and then install macOS. You will need an internet connection by Ethernet or Wi-Fi. Installation can take a few hours, so you can go do other things in the meantime. Once it's done, the system will restart on its own, and make sure you boot off the USB drive again by holding Delete and finding the boot menu again. When the OpenCore bootloader comes up, select the option that you named your SSD or macOS installer, and then press Enter. Finish up the installation and you'll be in macOS. Now we have to move the bootloader onto the EFI folder of the SSD so that way we can boot off the SSD and not the USB drive. Download mount EFI and open mount EFI.command and you may need to open system preferences and go to security and privacy then click open anyways to open the file. Mount the EFI for the USB drive by finding the name of it and entering the corresponding number and pressing enter. Go to finder and open the USB drive then drag the EFI folder to the desktop and eject the USB. Make sure you eject the USB as having two EFI partitions mounted can cause some issues. Now go back to mount EFI.command and mount the SSD EFI partition by pressing B and then enter. Go to finder and then open the EFI drive and drag the EFI folder on our desktop into that drive, then restart and you should be able to boot off the SSD. And that's it. Now we have an AMD Hackintosh that's honestly easier to set up than Intel OpenCore Hackintoshes. If you have any issues, I'll leave a link in the description below for a troubleshooting guide. That's going to wrap up today's video. If you did enjoy, thumbs up, down if you didn't, subscribe for more. Follow me on Twitter at RealBrandonYen if you have any questions or anything else. And I'll see you guys next time.